In this video, we are covering how to get the best setups for cargo and passenger to get the absolute best possible star in Transport Fever 2. And very specifically, early game, which a lot of people struggle with. It's a lot easier in the late game and I've covered that already. However, in the early game, it's quite a little bit more difficult. So here we have the war map. This is a custom map that actually has enemy AI in Transport Fever 2. However, we won't be touching too much on that today because we're talking about best cargo and best passenger strategies in their lines. Also, we're going to cover the naming strategies, which I think is a really important one that's often overlooked. We've got the classic north and south yards going to a distribution hub and then everything else being shared from those said hubs. However, one of the key issues is a lot of the industries aren't hooked up or are running on old, outdated structure. For example, this route here that goes from Strasbourg to Distribution Hub doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It means that our trains are actually more frequent on the main line. And that actually means that a lot of our fast train services are a lot slower, which is not a good thing. But now we've built this North Yard, it means we can run these resources just over here. It's like so much less distance to cover and it saves a lot of money on track maintenance. So that's two birds with one stone. Less traffic on the track slowing trains down and things just getting to where they need to go better. If we have a yard like this, we can load every single thing we need onto one train. So on this route here, we've got a line called the distribution to North Yard. And this is literally a line that goes all the way down to the distribution hub. The same can be said from the south. So what we need to do is we'll hook up all of the surrounding industries. So we've got here a steel to weapons factory. We've also got over here a coal mine, which is very useful because we had a coal shortage last time. We've got a few abandoned tracks, which we'll probably pull up. And then we've also got a steel to goods, which means we can double up on our goods output. And it's looking like that's pretty much it, apart from this weapons factory over here as well. So first of all, I'm going to connect all those said industries. We're going to go and pause the game. We're going to modify our cargo station and we'll get rid of this cargo platform because it's no longer necessary. And that leaves us with the truck drop off that's going from the mine over to this place here. We can get rid of this one as well. And then we can go to manage line. And now instead of going to upper Strasbourg, we can add a station which is going to be at the North Yard and set that to full alternate platforms. And that's now going to go ahead and take the iron over from this mine over here. Instead of going to the station to take it to the capital, it's going to bypass that and go straight to this Southern Yard. And then a big train is going to come and take all of that stuff. But it also now means that our North Yard train needs some of those carriages. So we'll quickly manage this. We're going to add some of these. So we'll modify it. Probably both trains actually. And we'll go onto our cargo and stick a couple of gondolas on here. So that's five on each. Quick modify. There we go. And on this distribution to North Yard, because it actually uses our high speed cross country route, the same one as our passenger services, we need to be using the absolute best quality stuff, which is why I've scrolled right to the bottom here of the type to get the highest speed on our train cars. We need to have a look at our trains. We're using this one here, which goes 90 kilometers an hour. That's good enough because it's faster than the train cars, which means that the top speed of this line is 80 kilometers an hour. And this also means that our iron to steel, which no longer goes to where we actually want it to go because we delete the line, of course. We can then sell our vehicles, or in my case, because I like to do things this way, is put them back to the depot. And that means we can reuse them later on. I absolutely hate selling things because I always like to reuse the historical artifacts and it gives the save so much charm. Now this means that this train can actually go ahead and be used for something like a commuter service. It's a slower train, was once our best train, but the history's now there, you know. What we should have done is probably use these we've already got. It's the exact same model as what I've just bought more of, but oh well, at least we've got some in the extra storage now. Coal mine all the way over here. We desperately need coal. So what we'll need probably is to bring a train in because it's quite far to go to get to this yard, even though it is a lot closer than going all the way over here to the distribution hub. Um, so I think what we'll do is we can actually double up our usage here. We can have a commuter route, that being passengers, that's going to run through all these little towns and collect into Paris, which you can feed the rest of the map. And then we can reuse those lines for our coal. I really don't like the Strasbourg setup, how it's using a train that's quite old on the main line here as it's slowing down our high speed Berlin to Paris route. So what I'll probably do is I'll delete this passenger route here and instead we'll have the trains that collect and go all into Paris. So I think that's fair. Let's do it. We're going to use a very, very basic design here. Would not recommend that you build straight through a city like I'm doing here, but it's just very easy. I could show you the concepts very simply. I would never dream of doing this on a proper map. So nice and simple, just like that, all tracks leading into a two-track mainline. Let's bring it to the other cities. 
We're going to employ a few more strategies here as well. We're going to try and place our train station down between the commercial and residential areas. It's going to be a bit more tricky in this city because things are very, very bunched together, including the military base. So like, what I'll do, I'll get rid of that there and then I'll pop this in just about here. And then that would mean that we actually have fair coverage over both sides. We don't really need coverage over industrial. That's nearly done. We'll delete this old line now because we're not going to need this anymore. You can still see the scars on the landscape where it once was. I love it. I love little details like that. It's uh, It adds so much character to the save. It's brilliant. And then now we need to connect this track back up over to Paris. It's all connected. Let's add some signals. Because this is a commuter route, I'm adding signals just before the stations or if there's a level crossing before the station. I'm also adding it before the level crossing. And the reason for doing this, they're commuter trains. So what that means is that they actually can pick up speed relatively quickly because they're nice and small. And it doesn't actually require a lot of stopping space and it won't require a lot of speed to start up again, if that makes sense. So it's just nice and simple to put them outside the stations. It means if a train's already in there, they, they can wait outside and then pull straight in. And then every now and again, we'll just place some signals as well, just to keep those block sections, think, keep things flowing. You can also use landmarks like roads if you want to put a block section in like that. That also helps, but this only works on commuter. So a new line that's going to go from Paris and that's going to go to all of these stations. And this is going to be called Paris Commuter 1. We will get Paris as a alternate destination because it's going to be a very busy station. Paris Commuter Commuter 1. Nice one. And then we go for a new line. This time we're going the other way around. That's going to go like that, like that, like that. And this is going to be called, you guessed it, Paris Commuter 2. And now we need some trains for these routes. Well, luckily we've got some trains left over from when we actually destroyed. Well, it used to be a train that went from Strasbourg to Berlin, but it's gone now. We've still got the trains left over. So if we send these guys back to depot, then we can then delete the line Berlin to Strasbourg intercity train, which let's be honest, it wasn't an intercity train. It was getting so outdated. It was becoming a commuter train. It was that slow. Berlin to Strasbourg intercity train. Get rid of that. And now we should have plenty of trains in storage. Let's have a look. Okay, so we got one of the commuter train types. We got one of our current commuter train types in here. And then we've also got one, two, three, three of our commuter train types in here. One, two, three, four intercity types. So it's decent. Um, I reckon what we do is we just strip all of these trains of their cars and we just go from there. As for passenger cars, it looks like we've only got like two here and then a few more up here, which is not ideal really, is it? But I don't really intend on buying any more. So what it might be a case of, if we bring some of the commuter trains that currently exist and take off some of their cars because they're quite long and then we just increase the frequency but decrease the amount of capacity, that should be better. I reckon train two, we can have three of these. So that one there gets three and then this one here can get as many as we can get basically. Uh, we don't really have any more, do we? So potentially what we do actually is we take these two cars off the end here on this train we stick these guys to the top and then we put one on each just like that that could work can we modify like that there we go lovely Ah, oh, look we've got some trains coming in already brilliant nice one that's our train just pulling in that we had out before okay so these two trains can now go on our paris route so remember we got two so we'll get one on that commuter and we'll get the other one on the other commuter so we've got a lot of cargo there a lot of cargo carriers and we've got a few trains left over quick check on our current commuter route that goes out from berlin and that reveals we have a lot of trains that have a lot of carriages. Like, this is crazy. I reckon five should be the maximum on here. We don't need any more than five at all. And if we got one of these big carriages, absolutely not. So that would leave one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the very admittedly crappy carrier types. So now we got those in storage. Let's see what we can do. We've got a couple of these semi-fast trains. So we could potentially put these together. If we bring this to the top, we've got to score for a million miles to get to the end of the cargo. So I say one, two, three, four, and then we take the other four and stick them on the other train, I think is relevant. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And now on both of those trains, I want to buy a new carriage as well. So what have we got available? Potentially a Russo Bolt because it's got decent capacity. Yeah, it, it's a lot more expensive to get the next step up. The Russo Bolt is just too good. It's so cheap compared to the other ones. It's crazy. And the capacity is so good as well. So we'll get two of these guys, stick them on, and then both of these trains are going to go on the respective routes. So we'll get one on Paris C1, and then one on Paris C2. Admittedly, that's definitely not enough trains. I mean, 
Two covering all of this land is not good enough. We're going to need way more than that. We'll probably do 10 to start off with, just so we have a less of a risk, I believe. For the rest of the trains, we could use the current standard, but that's going to expire soon. So I'm going to be tactical, and we're going to buy some more of the advanced trains. So I'll get some PLMs. We'll modify these to have carriages as well. The PLMs go 60, so we need something to go 62. Russo Bolt, perfect. Probably just need three of these. That's good. That's 10 vehicles. Let's take five and stick them on each one. And I've just realized as well, we've bought 10, but we've actually already got the two on each line. So we've actually got 12 trains, which is all right, isn't it? And then, of course, on this route from the Berlin commuter train, because we've reduced the amount of people that can get on each train, we're going to need more trains, which is a very easy fix. We just go back to the depot and we'll buy some more. And now as we let that run, let's go back to the originally what we were doing, which is to get the coal from over here and we'll bring it to where it needs to go. One cargo station, one train track, and that connects in like that. Doesn't need to be double tracked, but it probably will in the future. So that's good for now. New line that goes from there to our North Yard. And this becomes coal to North Yard. And we can finally put all of those rolling stock we have just sitting in storage to use. The many, many, many rolling stock. Probably need a train to haul all of this stuff that goes 80 because that's the top speed limit we can get for cargo. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, we'll go for these guys. Brilliant. So one of that train and that's a new train that's going to use... Let's go for, I say, all of these. Uh, we're going to need, like, a fair amount of these, to be fair. And perfect, that's now going to come out after this passenger train. They're still on the rounds, making their way out. So that now means that the coal is going from pickup to the North Yard. The North Yard on a different train to Distribution Hub, along with loads of more cargo. And that's getting spread out across the map. Very OP. We'll quickly touch on colours, because it's an important topic. And then what we'll do is we'll leave the game to run for a little bit, and we'll go ahead and see what happens. Colours, what I like to do is I'll give a very vibrant colour towards our yards. Pink is my personal favourite. One option is to just leave everything as random colours. A lot of people like this because it's quite easy to distinguish things. But I like to do things certain colours so I actually know what type they are just by looking at them. You'll notice a lot here, there's a lot of yellows and there's a bit of green in there for military. I just, very quickly, I like to know what something is by looking at it. So that's why I like to do that. I'll give very industry specific things. If it's like coal to somewhere, then I'll give it like a coal colour. That makes sense. Or wood, for example, like a brown colour. Uh, but passengers, I like to give a nice yellow colour. Unless, of course, it's an exception like this one, which is military and passenger. And the military obviously gets the preference there because it's a war game. So in that case, we'll make Paris commuter. That will become our yellow. And commuter 2, that will also become our yellow. We'll do a little bit of renaming as well. So a good naming convention for passenger. I use IC for intercity, C for commuter, CC for cross country. Just the best way of doing it. It's so easy. You can look at it immediately and read it and you know what it is. That's our last train pulling out of the depot. Everything is now en route to success. And look at that. Most of them already there. We're making mega money from it. And there we go. Perfect. We've got really good commuter coverage across every single town. We've got trains all over the place. Look at this. This is crazy. Amazing commuter coverage. And we fixed up our cargo routes to be nice and efficient and not block up any of the traffic on the main line. However, while this is great, it's working really well, we're getting lots of cargo coming in, lots of passengers nice and happy. We are also getting attacked. Cluj, our south yard, is under attack by the horrible enemy. We're going to lose part of our land, we don't want that at all. So join me in the next video where we're going to put this huge cargo system to use and max out our weapons and soldiers' supply to get this place won once again and get this battle absolutely destroyed. There's a lot of tanks to get through, so hopefully we can defeat them. But that's one for the next episode. And I want to ask you a quick question as well, guys. For Let's Play style content, would you prefer this sort of high energy and pace that I'm bringing, where each video is about one specific thing? Or would you guys prefer to watch just a Let's Play where I just play the game and it's nice and chill? What do you think? Let me know. Let's fight these guys in the next video, which is on screen right now.